Hi, hello and welcome everyone. I am happy to see you again. In this tutorial, we will learn about HVAC equipment selection. Let's move on to our first slide. We have split or else window AC unit. First, we have portable or mobile air conditioners. So, actually, this is these are all the type of split or window AC units. Second one, we have four mounted air conditioners, that wall air conditioners. Fourth, we have spot coolers, which is being used for the industrial application. Fifth one is window air conditioners. Sixth one is ceiling cassette air conditioners. Seventh one is duct mounted air conditioners. And the eighth one is multiple split air conditioners. So, as per your user type, the air conditioners can be categorized into three types. First one is residential and domestic application. Second one is commercial and office use. Third one is industrial applications. Cooling capacity in BTU. As we all know, one BTU per hour is equivalent to as we all know, 12,000 BTU per hour is equivalent to 1 tonnage of refrigerant. And kilowatt also we know because we have learned it in the unit and conversion class. As we know, for the residential and domestic application, mostly we will be using 6,000 to 20,000 BTUs. And for the commercial and office applications, we will be using 12,000 to 50,000 BTUs and for the industrial application 30,000 BTU it's a starting point and these are the equivalent values for the kilowatts. So totally we are using these types of split or AC units when it comes to real world application. So these are all the pictures of the AC units that we have seen just now. These units, it's a photo of a portable or mobile air conditioner. You can simply drag it anywhere. Underneath this unit, there will be some wheel. So you can check this unit wherever you go. This is a wall mounted unit. As you can see in this picture, this can be mounted on a wall. These are being used for the industrial application. So these are the spot coolers. You can use this for the hot environment during any hot work or else some welding activities. To cool the space you can use these spot coolers. So this is the floor standing equipment which will be kept in the, on the floor and this will also used to cool the space. As you can see normally the floor standing units will not be draggable. I mean you cannot drag it to anywhere. This will cover more area when it compares to this portable one. And these are all the multi-split air conditioners. As you can see there are multiple split units and here also we have one split units which can be ducted, connected, which can be duct connected. Here we have cassette type AC units which will be kept inside the ceiling and we have window AC unit these are all the old and traditional type AC unit then we have the ductor type AC units in this side duct will be connected and the other mechanisms are same the refrigerant will flow from the external source So, how you can select the split uh, window AC unit? For that, first you have to measure the cooling capacity which can be measured in tonnage of refrigeration or kilowatt. Airflow, it can be measured in CFM or liter per second. Static pressure, it could be on Pascal or inch water gauge. Air data, entering and leaving temperature of air. Electric power supply, it could be in volts, 
phase and frequency also then we have 20 30 volt and 415 volts mostly we will be using the 20 30 volt but this value could differ depends on your country it ranges between 2010 to 2030 and phase whether it's a single phase or three phase frequency what is the frequency of the machine then electrical power consumption the value will be in kilowatt then the seventh one is ambient conditions eighth one is space requirement so before selecting the equipment you have to consider this ambient conditions why is this necessary some equipments will be effective for some certain ambient conditions for example when it comes to some hot humid areas you cannot simply choose any equipments the equipment that you are selecting should withstand the ambient condition as in the ambient temperature ambient air pressure and and the altitude of the location is a tone space requirement whether the equipment can be fixed inside those specified space or not so these factors shall be considered while selecting the split or else window ac units moving on to our next unit which is a package units we have cooling capacity it could be total capacity or else sensible cooling load so it could be total cooling load or else sensible cooling load and uh, mostly we will be calculating both okay how you can calculate both well we will learn that thoroughly in our coming classes it is measured in terms of refrigeration or kilowatt airflow cfm or liter per second static pressure in pascal or inch water gauge air data entering and leaving temperature of the air electrical power supply volts phase and frequency this shall be added in the electrical power supply section electrical power consumption in kilowatt drain connection type size drain connection size so these also shall be considered a tone ambient conditions space requirement when it comes to split and window units the drain connection is also considerable maybe i forgot to add this point but you have to consider the drain connection as well as the drain hose will be run with the coil okay and the drain will be connected with any of the other drain pipes or else nearby floor drain the next one is rooftop in so let me explain how this system works well package units are using the dx type system you we can simply say this is a bigger version of a split unit but the only difference is that the indoor and outdoor units both will be placed inside the package unit well inside one unit you could find compressor condenser expansion valve and evaporator we are using the same mechanism when it comes to package unit and the split units as we all know the major difference and also you know the difference as it's inside the one unit and also the capacity could go up to 30 tonnage of refrigeration and the refrigeration refrigerants are majorly r407 and r22 then r413 so these are all the major refrigerant being used in this equipment and the next one is rooftop units or air, air handlers so this is also a dx type system first we need to consider the cooling capacity in total cooling capacity or sensible cooling capacity which can be measured in tonnage of refrigeration or in kilowatt then air flow of a system since the duct can be connected with the system directly air flow is also shall be considerable it could be on cfm or liter per second static pressure in pascal or in inch water gauge inside there will be fan 
okay so, so this fans capacity selection will be useful when we calculate the value of static pressure air data entering and leaving temperature electric power supply it could be on volt phase and frequency electric power consumption in kilowatt drain connection size ambient conditions and space requirement as you can see in this picture the mechanism is also similar to the package unit as this is also a dx type system but the major difference is that this will be manufactured with higher capacities and it will be installed on the roof so the casing of the or else the components being used in this system can withstand higher weather higher and harsh weather conditions rooftop units is also a air handler which is being operated by the dx type system the rooftop units can be installed in low rise to mid rise building applications cooling load can be measured in the tonnage of refrigeration or kilowatt airflow will be measured in cfm or liter per second sst which stands for saturated suction temperature it's a temperature of the atmospheric air then condensing entering air then we have electric power supply in volt phase and frequency then electric power input in kilowatt seven is a ambient condition eight is a space requirement so in here as you can see saturated suction temperature is at is the temperature at which the refrigerant starts to change its medium from water to vapor this is called saturated or liquid to vapor uh, this is called sst and for the selection of the condensing unit you need to find out the cooling load capacity in tonnage of refrigeration or kilowatt airflow cfm or liter per second sst as we all know the definition is uh, the sst we know the definition of the sst condensing entering air the entering air enters from the side for the condensation electric power supply in volts phase and frequency electric power input in kilowatt ambient conditions and space requirement so how this system works well this has only two parts and we have a compressor it could be multiple compressors and we have a condenser it's a air cool condenser as you can see the refrigerant will be compressed inside the compressor and it will flow to the condenser from the condenser the fan will remove the heat from the condenser so that the refrigerant will be cooled and it will go back to the indoor unit the indoor unit could be split unit type it could be dx type since the refrigerant comes out of condenser will be in cooling mode the it can be diverted to many fcus or else many split units or indoor split units as in or else uh, air handling units as well so this is the working principle of the condensing unit it has only two parts which are compressor and condenser evaporator and expansion valves will be fixed for inside the indoor units but this is not indoor units this is just outdoor outdoor units the next one is energy recovery wheel this is being useful for the fhus okay fhu is fa fresh air handling unit first we need supply fan data air flow required then total static pressure then motor power then return fan data we need air flow total static pressure then motor power heat recovery wheel entering and leaving air dry bulb and wet bulb temperature pre cooling coil maximum velocity maximum pressure difference 
entering and leaving air in dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. Maximum velocity as in inside um, in the air velocity and the pressure difference at the both the side of the coil. Cooling coil entering and leaving air dry bulb and wet bulb temperature and coil capacity. Reheat coil maximum velocity maximum pressure difference entering and leaving air dry bulb and wet bulb temperature electrical power supply it could be measured in volts phases and frequency can be calculated or else just figured out electrical power input in kilowatt as you can see in this drawing we have supply air fresh air which will come from the atmosphere once it get inside the system we will be having this kind of recovery wheel okay this is called this area is a recovery wheel where the fresh air will flow and this will go to the this will go to some coil as you can see in here uh, it could be pre cooling coil and cooling coil then reheat coil okay here we have some coil as you can see here also we will be having one coil then we will be having the fan okay which will supply the preconditioned to conditioned space preconditioned air to the conditioned space okay so when the air returned from the uh, space the from the condensing space conditioning space it will go to the reheating coil then it will go to the heat recovery wheel then the heat will be passed to the fresh air okay in this way this procedure will continuously repeated and the heat will be recovered again and again